Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the old, well actually we're not at the Old Bird Farm today. We're at the Liberty Bell House. We're at Mr. Scott's house in beautiful Tobleton, Georgia. And so I'm over here in Mr. Scott's driveway to change the brakes on the uh, 57 Chevy here. It's been pulling really bad to the right side and uh, I don't know exactly what's causing it. So we're gonna dig in and see what we can find. This car has been converted to disc brakes. So we'll talk about some of that once we get the wheel off and get down to the brakes. Oh look, this pretty little thing's on. It is, so this uh, car originally would have had drum brakes in the front, but I converted it to disc brakes. This is an eBay conversion kit. It uses a Malibu uh, pads and calipers. I'm not sure what the rotor would be off of. And it's obviously not sticking over here, so I'm not sure why it's pulling. But we're gonna try to uh, take it apart and find out. In fact, I see no reason why it should be pulling at all over here. So might need to look at the other side. Yeah, those pads look see. good. Yeah, they do. They do look good. Better than what's on my truck right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and open the other side up. I ordered these wheels off of eBay too. They're off of a, like a Nova or something that has the same uh, bolt pattern. But I bought these, these are reproduction. Um, but I bought them new and they say disc brakes, disc brakes, power disc on it. So kind of cool. We got no reason that this one, this side over here, should not be sticking. Because it, it pulls to the right, like it's got more braking power over there. Um, so the next step is there could be air in the line. Could have to bleed it out. Um, I see nothing, you know, the brake pads look fine. So does the rotor. Go look at the other side again. That rotor looks about the same over here. Well, we will uh, go ahead and pull it out and uh, take them apart and look again. And so I'm waiting for Mr. Scott to bring a ratchet back for the socket for the uh, to remove this caliper so we can just take a further look at this but while he's getting that i thought i'd point out everything is new um, as far as the front suspension goes this the upper lower control arms are new spring is original and new shocks um, and this is original this these disc brake conversion kit bolts onto the original spindle there and every steering component is new as well on this car so it drives just as good as it did back in 1957 and if we can get this new braking issue squared away we'll have no problems oh man that's in there tight because i'm gonna have to get on my back this car supported on jack stands by the way not just the jack Yeah, well, they're moving. And half of that wrench turning out.
I don't see anything anything wrong here. Yeah, they do. Do you have a big C clamp? Huh? Do you have a big C clamp? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the uh, pads. I found one I haven't yet. That's right. So I've got new pads for the car anyway, because uh, like I said, there was, or I may not have said yet, there was some noise coming from uh, from the front brakes as well. It kind of sounded like the sensors on the pads. And I don't remember if these, if I put new pads on this car. I haven't driven this car much since all of this work was done. You know, it's probably got a thousand miles on it. Since it was, um, I haven't bent this one yet. There we go. Well, that's too big or what? Yeah, just sit up on the side. Since it was built, I uh, probably only put a thousand miles on this car, so the brakes shouldn't have worn out by now, but no. We'll see. Uh, those might be the brakes that came in the kit, though. Um, and you know they put the cheapest possible brakes in the kit so it would be right. good to change them regardless this back together and make sure we lubricate everything um, when we do is that upside down there you go. Upside down, there we go something like that and this one is spin it there you yeah, go. There we go make sure that's the what is this guy doing on there okay yeah those must be the original kit parts I don't think that there's any reason I'm going to put some grease on here um, to make sure these slide back and forth like they're supposed to, but otherwise this, uh, this looks pretty good to go over here. We'll have new brakes regardless and um, see what happens when we get the other side done. All right, so we got the other side taken apart, put back together, no visual problems there going to do the same thing over here on this side and take it apart put it back together grease everything and uh, then we'll take it for a test drive and see what happens I'll go get the This side has way more brake dust on it than the other side. Yeah. I do notice that. But I would assume that that other side would have more brake dust on it if it was... The way know, it was grabbing. The way it was grabbing, yeah. There's a lot of brake dust over here. One bushing. Trying to lose those. Everything looks good. Once again, pads look fine. Caliper looks fine. It is more brake dust. The rotor's good. It's also not as shiny, which could be um, from it not making as much contact. Or that, uh, if you want that. Socket is right down there too. There we go. 
Got a spider web in there. I noticed that. I'm wondering how. Alright, so what we're doing is uh, since we're putting new brake pads in there, regardless of how the other ones look, because I've got them, and again, I think that the pads that were in there came with that kit. And anytime you get consumable stuff like brake pads in a kit, unless you're getting a high dollar kit, that's you know, they're not going to be particularly good parts. Um, this is not a high dollar disc brake kit for this car, but it uses all um, parts store parts. So if you do have a problem with it, underneath it, you don't have to order a new part from that's specific for a disc brake system. You just go to the local parts store and ask for, you know, 69 Malibu pads and, and get them same day. And most, most places have stuff like that in stock, very common car parts. So I think it works out well. And it also stops this car very well. A little too good at the moment, you could argue, but very well. A little too good on one side. That is. Contact parts are on this. Upside down. Upside down. That's right. I think it'd be my first time doing this. <laughs> no, that sure's not. No. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, so I'm gonna reassemble this. Again, lube everything. It's got these bushings that the caliper slides on as it moves when you press your brakes. Just keep everything greased and moving freely so nothing, ain't got no reason for nothing to stick. We're also, while we've got this car apart, we're going to take off the grease caps and repack then just make sure the front bearings got all the all the grease they need and now after i get the grease off my hands we'll be good to go to put this back together That'll pack a lot of grease in there now. A lot extra for it. All right, so we test drive it now. See if these brakes are gonna work any better. You never rode in this car when it was loud and obnoxious, did you? I don't think I did. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely stops good. Okay. Let's try again. Yeah, it's stopping straight. That's weird. The pads is in the pad somewhere. It was, it was in something we did. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but everything looked good when we took it apart. But we just replaced the pads, greased everything again. It can be something as simple as the, uh, the calipers just need to reset. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that too. Um, Either way you want to go. All right. We'll, we'll take them the scenic route. All right, that's fine. Ground top. There's the old Ford dealership. It's the McCoy house. Where infamous murder happened. Oh, 
Oh, you are going to Senior Craft. I want to show something here. If you go look on my other channel, Sidestep Adventures, Dan and I filmed an old train depot here at Tomlinson. And Scott's about to show you where it used to be. Yeah, it used to sit right here. This was the storage one, and there was another one that was closer to the tracks. But somebody moved it, but this one was torn down completely. And that just goes to show, you know, us filming stuff before it's gone. And this stuff goes away. Yeah, and all this basically CSX land. It's not being used for anything. Now one of these days we're going to film that, right Scott? Yeah, that's the old uh, Lavart College. And then up here on the left is the Episcopal Church. All these buildings are on the National Historic Land, uh, Landmark places. There's the county courthouse in the distance. We're at the historic Peppos. <laughs> yeah. We're our famous gas stations. <laughs> and there's the two setters. Well, I was going to say, you got yeah. sitting outside. They are always there. You know they're going to say something about this car. Right, yeah. yeah. Alright, well we got the car all fixed up. It's uh, stopping good now. So that's the that's the last real problem I've been having with it. And it just started, so new pads, hopefully that's all good. And what would you say, it's time for some big chick? It's got time it. for some big chick, but hold on. Yeah, I'm holding. I, I missed your birthday. I'm really sorry about that. It's okay. Well... I know you don't go around going, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. But I got something for you. I've been holding Good. on for you. This is for your birthday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the 25th anniversary edition of the White Trash Cookbook. Heck yeah, man. You know? And uh, you can of, get all kind kinds of recipes of, we got in there. Oh, man. Let's see what we got here. Let's get down past the jargon there. Come on. 25th anniversary. So it's been yeah. going around for okay. a little bit. Uncle Willie's swamp cabbage stew, stew cabbage, butter beans. Hold on, we get out here some good stuff because I thought that I saw some roadkill recipes in here once. <laughs> well, what out of this have you eaten? Uh, I haven't made any of these. <laughs> no, I have not. I'm, I'm starting to look at a, it's not really bad looking to tell you the truth. Corn on the cob, corn off the cob. Succotash, Indian succotash. Uh, Maddie Mead's corn and tomatoes, uh, spud hot potatoes salad. Um, it doesn't look that bad, really. I don't know. I might have to keep this uh, onion pie. Now that's that that one. Yeah, you yeah. can. You can uh, there you go. Mike Mitchell's grandmother's spinach pie. <laughs> A lot of brown turnip greens and mustard greens. So I thought, that, okay, there's a oh, lot more. Oh, it keeps going. Yeah, then then you start getting, that's just the vegetables and stuff. Yeah. Now you start getting into, you know, fish, shrimp, cooter pie, dinner salad. Let's see what to get into meats here. Sandwiches. Oh, they got cakes and go cobbler too. Look at yeah. this. This is the uh, Kiss Me Not sandwich. Kiss Another me not Kiss Me sandwich. Not sandwich. I wonder what's it. Oh, it's got to have a lot of onions. Yeah, in it. I was going to yeah. say. These yeah. dessert old-fashioned pound cake, that's all right. 
angel flake ambrosia <laughs> well you know the thing about it is a lot of these are probably recipes the stuff that uh oh we got drinks uh you know people just making with what they had absolutely you know yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that no you know um miami iced punch mm. iced tea south yeah low calorie pick me up high calorie pick me up <laughs> so that's so all right some of it you know it's just i think it's worth trying some of this stuff absolutely you know but uh so i have i didn't see a, a recipe for anything with roadkill in that so i hope you enjoy that i will i appreciate it i appreciate happy it happy birthday again thank you thank you white trash cooking it's a dream come true i can just hear raynell and betty sue at every tupperware party in rolling fork saying ernie went from white trash to white trash overnight <laughs> pretty cool cool thanks scott <laughs> no problem we're we gonna go eat some fried let's chicken let's go get some let's go get some uh big chick